the question for mm-hmm. you. Now, do you think, what is your, what are your thoughts now on like belt levels? You know what I mean? Because like, you know, there's, there's black belts and then there's, I, I, I heard this Joe Rogan episode when he was talking to Andy Stump. Mark mentioned it to me, mm-hmm. but uh, he was talking about how there's black belts and then there's like fucking black belts, mm-hmm. yeah. right? right? So what do you feel about, you know, the belt system? Do you, I mean, it still has a place, mm-hmm. but what are your thoughts on it? My thoughts now is that the belt means exactly what it means to the individual and without sounding like rude, not much past that in the sense that like your belt level should be appreciated. You should be proud of it. You should acknowledge the work it took to get there, but it's, it's representative of the individual because to your point, especially now with Nicky Rod or J Rod or big Dan just got his purple belt. Like, <laughs> like, like dude, come on. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm, I'm paying, I'm paying Dan for privates and everything. And I'm, yeah. and I'm a black belt from Arizona. It's like, I don't care. And, and if I go into a room like new wave, I'm like, I'm a black belt. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, like, go, like, I would tell myself, go fuck yourself. Like, dude, like, uh-huh. just chill, you know? Like, it, at the end of the day, like, again, I'm more than happy to admit there's there's white belts that probably train at Henzo's under John that could explain things better than me, that know things better than me. Just because I can beat them in a role doesn't mean that um, th- my knowledge is up to par with them with John. Yeah. So I would say that, you know, going back to Arizona, when I got my black belt, it's like it, the black belt is representative of the work that I did, the mm-hmm. people that I competed against, the people that I trained with. And what my instructor thought that I was worthy of at the time, and that's that's where that line ends. Mm-hmm. Not in a bad way, but that's where it is. Because then if I go over to New Wave, then new standards, new training partners, like the standard is just different. Because if I'm getting tapped by Dan like six times in five minutes, and he's a purple belt, you know, if I had started with John and John didn't know my rank, would he tell? Would he give me my black belt the next mm-hmm. day? Like probably not, you know. So, and you know, you go to like uh, Nicky Rod when he was beating people as a blue belt or J Rod mm-hmm. now, and time wise or experience wise, obviously their instructor doesn't feel like they're at like their their ba- black belt level. That's yes. why that's why it comes down to like your brown or black belt level, my brown or black. And and if you move somewhere, that might change. Or and your perspective it, mm-hmm. on it might change. Mm-hmm. And same thing maybe with the guys that like beat team, like J-Rod is a new purple belt, you know, and but he's beaten world-class black belt. So then to that point, like their instructors feel like he needs to accumulate X amount of experience and do whatever to earn his black belt. Or, you know, the guys at New Wave, the same thing. John felt that Dan needed to do X, Y, and Z to earn his purple belt. And he's going to have different standards for him for his brown and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, yeah, to anyone watching, it's not even that I'm trying to discourage anyone. I think it's just important to notate that, like, don't let anyone make you feel bad about being a belt if you can't beat a lower belt. And also be humble enough to understand that your belt doesn't go any far past what you think it means to you or or your instructor, you know? Mm-hmm. You being a black belt and wherever doesn't mean that you're going to come into some room and wherever and just dick on all the blue belts. You know, it, it could vary. Yeah. You know, so that's that's my latest perspective after training with these guys for so long. Loose a br- new brown belt. You know, there's mm-hmm. blue belts in there. Like Helena's a new blue belt because she's 16. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. but she's obviously well on most black belts level. So, yeah, yeah, there's a lot that I think about that. But that's my latest perspective because I think about it a lot, to be honest. You know, like because mm-hmm. there's you you feel that. Uh, imposter syndrome where and granted like I, I went to an extreme like new wave it doesn't give us too much better than that but even still at that point like I felt pretty confident about my skills back home and and I still do to some degree I know I have a lot of room to go but at the same time it's like hey but if but if I'm a black belt and Dan's a new purple belt and he clearly knows so much more than me and he's beating me just with five percent effort like you, you think about those things. And then my ultimate conclusion, my friend Austin Baker helped me kind of like get through this. Uh, just, you know, it, you earned it. You know, you did you did what was co- required for you to get there. And just because you're in a new environment where you're not necessarily beating lower belts doesn't is, isn't indicative of your des- deservingness of that said belt type yes. of thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's so many different levels. I remember a uh, good friend, Bobby Lashley, who was a <laughs> uh, like four-time national champion <laughs> right. wrestler. And when he went and tried out for the you know, Olympic trials for wrestling, he would hear a lot of guys say like, yeah, I'm all American. I'm all American. And they mm-hmm. just used to say, yeah, I'm really proud of you. Right. That's what they would tell each other. Really? Like, yeah, great. Right. Cool. Okay. Uh-huh. So is everybody else, mm-hmm. you know, and then now you have to try to figure out, you know, how to keep up with the pack. I've heard a lot of stories like this over the years. I remember hearing uh, a story about, um, 
<clears throat> Jack Jack Nicholson in the movie A Few Good Men. He went and did like a rehearsal, and uh, Tom Cruise went to the rehearsal as mm-hmm. well, and everybody else was there. And like sometimes people know their lines, and sometimes people kind of don't, and they mm-hmm. just. It's just a practice, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, Jack Nicholson went there and just crushed everybody and did wow. his role and was in character. And Tom Cruise just like went back to his trailer and was like, "What the fuck? Damn! Like I better step my shit right. up." So, I, I love stories like that. I love hearing stuff like that because there's so many different levels. I mean, what if you just went to a different country or you went to a different, like you're saying, you go mm-hmm. into a different area? People know different things. And if you think about what jujitsu did for MMA, it just completely flipped it upside down <laughs> in its head. Yeah, right. Ken Shamrock was one of the best fighters in the world. Some of the, you know, one of the best fighters anyone's ever seen before. Yeah. And then when he met Hoist Gracie, he was like, I don't even really know what that was. Right. Like afterwards, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of what he said. He's yeah. like, I, I, I don't understand what jujitsu is, but he's like, I better learn it. Mm-hmm. And that's the position that you get in. It's like, you better learn and adapt. Otherwise you're going to get yeah. your ass kicked. Yeah, totally. Totally. I, I, I've experienced, so let's bring it down to more so a hobbyist level. I, I feel like a lot of people experience this when they, get a belt at their gym and then they go to open mat or they travel and they go to a different gym and then they get crushed or whatever by a blue belt or, or the blue belt knows more because their instructor likes to teach certain things that the other one does and that type mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. And they go through that, that feeling of, you know, an imposter syndrome. And, you know, I, I think at that point, instead of being regretful of your belt or questioning your belt, just more so just, okay, well, this is the blue belt standard of this school. I would like to be a blue belt standard at every single school. So with that said, like, let's let's learn from these people or let's ask what they're doing. And then so that that just makes you better over time. I think there's a lot of fear of like, especially, and I'll, and I'll talk about it a bit. When I got my belts faster, um, purple and brown specifically, black, I didn't hear too much about it, but purple and black or brown, I had a like a big outla- out, outlash from the jujitsu community for the most part, like on uh, my brown belt, uh, Jiu-Jitsu Times had posted because I, I had made I made like a clickbait YouTube video mm. power lifter gets brown belt in 2.5 years and then so Jiu-Jitsu Times got a hold of it and they shared it and there's a lot of people in the Arizona community that had nice, nice things to say supportive and there's a lot of people that didn't know me that said a lot of like outlandish things and I think on a smaller scale some of us go through that at times too especially like hobbyists where well, I don't want to go to another gym and roll with their blue belt and I'm a pro belt and then they think I suck or, you know, mm. they're going to say it. And, like, these things go through go through your head. I, and I dealt with that, too. Back home in Arizona when I had people talking all the smack, I'm like, damn, well, what if I go to open mat and I lose a blue belt and I'm proving all the haters r- right or whatever, like that type of thing. My my interpretation of it now, which is why I think the new wave thing has been very healthy for me, <laughs> where it's like, dude, I don't care how many mental obstacles you try to or gymnastics you try to do, you will n- at least not in the near future, you will never be better than these people. So just accept the fact that <laughs> you're not their level, right? And just like just make yourself a mental white belt. Fuck it, mm-hmm. be a mental white belt for your whole life. Yes, mm-hmm. and and when you just like mentally put yourself there, one, the belt will come. Two you don't go through that type of mental, you don't handicap yourself mentally from worrying about what other people are going to think. Cause all that does is handicap you from what you could have learned. Mm-hmm. Maybe they will say some shit. Maybe they will talk shit. Like who cares? You know how many people talk shit about my natural status or whatever? Like who cares? Oh, yeah. and, you, and you know the same thing too. Yeah. But if you cared as much as what people think you should about what people say, where would you be or where would I be? Where would any of us be? Where would Mark be if, if he cared about everything that people said negative about him? And mm-hmm. That's some of the growth that I've come through the last that last year or so. It's just like I understand and I'm confident who I am, my skill. I understand what my weaknesses are and I'm working on it. What anyone else has to say about it just doesn't matter as much anymore. 